Right here, we're going to learn some calligraphy 101. My name is Melissa Rawa, this is Art and Soul. Let's go. And I'm excited. Same here. Yeah, I'm How super excited. Doing? Oh, wonderful. I'm, well, I'm excited, but I'm nervous because I haven't done calligraphy before. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, and I have terrible handwriting. I mean, the, oh, well, that might be a little bit of a problem, but then not too much. Not too much. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> okay. No, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, there are just a few basic steps to calligraphy writing. Okay. Um, this one, we're using the nib and the... Um, the holder nib and holder nib and holder so this is the nib mm -hmm. and then this is the holder i'm okay. using an oblique holder but then you can also use a straight holder okay so depending on which one which with your preference this looks like i'm going to have to take a seat for this yes so definitely. i yeah so i can learn and study well 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 so you guys don't go anywhere we'll be right back I'm here with the wonderful Abokuma and she's going to be giving me calligraphy 101 lessons. As you saw just a few moments ago, I was getting a little bit of tutoring, but now it's about to get really hands on. So yes. So Linda. Yes. Okay. I was just writing Linda where we're just addressing a few party invitation envelopes. So you dip your nib into the ink, make sure any excess ink is off it. Mm -hmm. And then this is going to be the eye, so I'm going to go, go with start with going up that way. Mm -hmm. That's a thin upstroke. Make it a little thicker coming down. Then I again. So that's the eye. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the end. So the end is going to be a little thicker. Mm. Right? And then just make it as continuous as possible. This is very therapeutic. It is. It can yeah. be. <laughs> like I can just watch this all day. That's exactly how I started actually. I used to watch a lot of calligraphy um, videos mm -hmm. and it was very it was very therapeutic to watch because it's very fluid. Yeah. You know, it's like a very fluid consistency. So that's it, Linda. So um do you wanna try? <laughs> <laughs> You just need to see my handwriting. Yes, I would love You'll to try. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Let's give you an easy one. Or do you want to write Melissa? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can write your name. So what's the difference between a calligraphy pen and a fountain pen? So the calligraphy pen is, um, this one is the calligraphy pen. So it has the nib and then the holder. So this is actually detachable. So you can take the nib off because okay. there are different types of nibs depending on what you want to, you want to write. Okay. Sorry, it's a little no, tough right now. Stopping. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. So we have like a bunch. We have like a bunch of different types of nibs in here, depending on the flow and the thickness of what you want your um, lettering to be. Mm -hmm. So that's the calligraphy nib. It has this. It has the the holder, mm -hmm. and then it has the nib. This is the oblique. So this one oblique. helps with the slanting. But then we also have like the straight one, which mm -hmm. um, both do the same thing. But then this one is more if you're more comfortable with the cursive or the slanted writing you can use this one it's easier mm. to use this one but the fountain pen the fountain pen comes with the ink cartridge already in, already inside, inside right. of it yeah and then we 
I'm not sure. I think you can't. I think you can't refill it. I don't know how because I don't really use it. But then this one, oh, yeah, you yeah. literally just dip the ink and then keep using it, From refilling it. What I remember with a fountain pen, you you unscrew. It either goes in the top, I right, think. Right. And I don't know. I I can't remember. I was so young. I think you can have a lineup of a couple of ink cartridges. Already stored oh, in, okay. like okay. stored already. Okay. Then and take then it out and then just. And then, yeah. I think. Yeah, and then once you run out, you run out. You run right? out to buy some yeah. more, yeah. But this one, it's just the ink. Wow. You can literally clean this after every use. I I use um, window cleaner, glass cleaner. Mm -hmm. It just wipes off the ink nicely, and then it's like good as new. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> window cleaner, guys. Yeah. Remember that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try. No, but how do you know? Is it you who determines whether you want a thick? Uh, a thicker letter or it's really determined by the motion um a thicker letter in terms of like your l so your l mm -hmm. is thick right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but you had to do upwards and downwards strokes right. so is it you who determine how thick you wanted the l or it's really yes. because of the motion no the motion both helps so by default when you're going doing an upstroke no ink comes out when you're doing an upstroke so by default upstrokes are usually mostly um thin mm -hmm. but then when you're doing the downstroke that's where it um you can determine how thick or thin you want okay. that one to be okay but then if you're not careful so you might have too much ink coming out so you have right. to be a little it has to be balanced yeah. and it, it's a lot of practice so don't don't be nervous it's your very first time so it's okay for you or maybe we can start let's let's start with you with um with doing strokes instead of writing a whole name. There you go. Yeah, I'm it's, about it'll to be back. much easier. <laughs> You're trying to embarrass me. <laughs> so let's do the down and up strokes. Okay, so I, I'm, I'll do the strokes on here. So you do the strokes on there. Or you, you still want to write your name? No, no. Okay. <laughs> we'll try later. <laughs> okay. So um, we can do, we can start by doing up strokes a little easier. So let's do a little um, curved up strokes, like, just like that like hairline strokes like that. And I do some of these sometimes as practice as well, just to make sure that you're... Oh. Nice. Yeah, so uh, there's a way you should be holding the nib as well. I mean, the, the pen, yeah, you should have like a firm grip on it and, and also just make it as fluid as possible. I've never been so nervous to hold a pen. <laughs> Why is the pen making me nervous? Oh, there we go. But these ones are thick. They're, yeah, so, so ease on the pressure ease on a little the pressure. bit. Yeah, just make it a little less. There we go, see it now, seems so bad. <laughs> there we go, yeah. All right, so then maybe we could do downstrokes. Yes. Let me just get a little more ink, get the excess ink off. And then we can do a few downstrokes. So towards the end, you could release it a little bit. Do you get what I mean? To thin it so, out. Yeah, to thin it out just a little bit. So it's, it's a, a lot of little more pressure. A lot, a little. You're, you're, you're still. Because if, if you write without any pressure, it will just be like another. You realize this is without pressure, so it just looks like another upstroke. But then mm. if you add a little more pressure, it's a little thicker. Do you see the difference? You, you, I think you're a little scared to push the thing, it won't break. Trust me. <laughs> No, this is <laughs> it won't break. There we go. Yay. Yeah. You're judging me. Oh, <laughs> I'm teaching you. <laughs> no, it's okay to judge. I would judge myself, honestly. Okay, it's a bit better. It's not yeah. like yours, but. Yeah, but then do you realize you, you see, you notice the, the thick strokes versus. versus um, so maybe do you want to try a letter? Ooh, I'm graduating. <laughs> okay, yes, no, I do. Yeah. No, because calligraphy, you know, I don't think we really think about it. Mm -hmm. We don't really think about the pressure, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. learning what stroke mm -hmm. can determine what. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's just such a, I feel it's um, an underrated art form. It or is. Or an ex underexposed, underexposed art form, sorry. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, no, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm taking this very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> so, even apart from the up and down strokes, there are literally a few strokes that once you master, you should be lit literally like you should be able to write anything. Okay. So um, it's, it's like a few strokes and a few um, curves and lines that you should learn, okay. and then when you combine them, they form letters, and then that's where you can write like the whole alphabet. Once you're able to write the whole alphabet, you can just join the letters and, and form words <laughs> from them. Okay. I Let's like try and write a. A. Should yeah. I add more ink? Yes. Yes. So let's do with the a. What we're going to do is 
we'll start a little a let's write small a not okay. big a so it starts this way we go up Whoa. okay we need to do a little more ink so that can happen too yeah so we're gonna go up like that and then downstroke a little thicker and then it goes up again and then down thicker and then like that wow a whole science so you realize it's like I, 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 I did the thick um, I did the downstroke thick right in the middle of the A yes. so it's in the middle of the A and then in the middle of the stroke any reason why you did that um it just looks nice looks nice. <laughs> I could go all the way but then it would just it'll look a little weird so hmm. yeah the ink doesn't want to come out just try it one more time and then yeah and then put a little more pressure Oh. This is squiggly. It's okay. Oh no! It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. So, um, you <laughs> notice I put the, the nib on there and then it opens up. And yes, I see. Yeah, it. it's run out of ink, so I okay. need to put some more ink in there. So I can yes, you did teach me that yeah. before. You're probably like, no, when Melissa said she was not good, she meant she was not good. So let's do that. See, okay. The eye downstroke, and then I would just do a tail like that. There we go. See, it helps so bad. I'll try to do this. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's for paper calligraphy with the nib and the ink. So I think that maybe we'll have a quick break because we're going to, well, you're going to teach me how to draw on glass. Yes. Wow, okay guys. So we are having one-on-one -on -one calligraphy lessons, learning the art of calligraphy, which I believe is a very underexposed art form. Um, it's quite fun actually, it's really fun. And I'm here with the wonderful Abakoma. And am, I, am I doing okay? You're doing great. Yeah, you laughed at me. <laughs> I, I laughed that was just at, the first letter. And I laughed it was at your myself. first one, but it was good. It it's was not good, bad. you did really well. Okay, <laughs> Abakoma says I'm doing well. So when we come back, we're going to be exploring how to draw on glass. Wow, yeah, you don't want to go anywhere. This is Arts and Soul, we'll be right back. Soul, art and soul. <laughs> Welcome back, you are tuned into Arts and Soul. We are learning the art of calligraphy. Hmm. First of all, how did you even get into calligraphy? Uh, how I got into it, it was, it was just um, meant to be a hobby. So um, I work in the creative um, industry already and a lot of calligraphy videos popped up on my social media and whenever I saw it, I was like, oh, this is really nice, it's really soothing to watch, it's lovely to watch, I want to be able to do that. So one day I was just going through social media once and um, a video came up of um, advertising a course. A calligraphy course, a beginner's calligraphy course. I was like, oh, I should take this course. So I, I, it was an online course. So I took the course and then I bought a few of the items that they had suggested that we buy. And that's how I started. And that's <laughs> started it. Already, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and what were you doing before that? I am a wedding planner, events management. I do events management already. I still do it. So it kind of it kind of goes. It complements. Yeah, it complements what I do full time. So it's not too far off from my main job. <laughs> that's really smart. That means you must save on some resources because calligraphy um a lot of people i mean it's been a trend for so long that people want handwritten invitations mm -hmm. hand mm -hmm. um, written um cards so the fact that you are also your own resource exactly how has that helped yeah. you in your business i mean it's helped a lot because um like you said i already know quite a number of events people in the events business so marketing it to them has been a little bit easier because Oh, I do calligraphy, so let your brides know, let your grooms know, let your clients know. So yeah. it's, it's, I'm already accessible in that sense, so this as, is like an add-on. So they're already, um, there's already market for it, for me doing this in there. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, did you ever think you'll see the day where Ghana um, events, like solid event companies, private ones, and, and calligraphy, and, and just artists, did you ever see, did you think that you would see the day where artists could really thrive in the event space 
because it's still creative yeah but i mean before maybe we were just doing traditional we were yeah. doing funeral we were planning yeah. here and then it just we used to rely on the family mm -hmm. to put mm -hmm. things together mm -hmm. which we still do mm -hmm. there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it but did you think that ghana would be up and coming for these things um i think i think we're getting there we're definitely far ahead from I mean compared to maybe five to ten years ago now we're very open-minded and we're very open to new experiences new ideas so yeah I am I'm, I'm positive about about um, about that yeah in the events industry okay yeah so it's looking bright very much very much you guys have so much patience when I say <laughs> you guys I mean event planners yeah decorators coordinators because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not easy and then we also have to think we have seasonal issues sometimes yes, yes, the rainy season yes. and yeah and all those come into consideration it's a patient job wow. to have and you're very patient. <laughs> we thank you we really <laughs> do so well we're going to continue the conversation but mm -hmm. let's also um let's okay write on glass right? yes yes we're going to write on glass so when you're writing on glass it's um you know what the up and down strokes that I taught you mm -hmm. in the in, on writing on paper? It's pretty much the same, except you can't really do an up and down stroke with glass. Okay. So that would, um, because of that, it's not technically it's not calligraphy. So Ooh. it's called full calligraphy. Full calligraphy. Full calligraphy. So what what that oh, what that full, mean? Full like, like fake. F -A -U, yeah, fake, the French, fake, okay. yeah, fake calligraphy. So what that is is you you create the down strokes. The thickness, oh, okay. you know, so you write everything normally, but then you come back and kind of just thicken the down strokes as oh. you would be writing on paper. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let let me show you how that's done. I'll use so for um, glass, I use paint pen. What it's called is paint pen. So it's pretty much paint and pen form. Okay. Yeah. So um, just shake it just to make sure everything is nice and dandy. I'm going to use a gold color for this one. Just testing it on the paper before I write. And um, let me write it in a slanted. I'm going to write love, just because. We all like love. <laughs> well, I hope we all like love. <laughs> right. So I just. Are your resources expensive? Do you think? Um, it's it's not too expensive, but then what makes it expensive is the time. It takes a lot of time, yeah. and it's very time consuming, especially if you're doing a bigger board, mm -hmm. and if you're doing something that needs to be centered. You, you take up a lot of time. I could, I could work on, um, this took me about seven and a half hours to make, wow. combined. Right yeah, but I didn't do it all at the same time. I had to take breaks and do other things in between. Yeah. But it takes quite a bit of time to do. Yeah. Do you think your clients understand it's time consuming? No, no, no they don't. Oh, a lot gosh. of people don't understand that it takes so much time. Yeah. So um, on my social media, I have written that um, I need at least two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. And people usually don't understand. They're like, oh, just write on the thing and oh, let's go. Wow. I'm like, no, I can't just write. Like, <laughs> you know, I need I need a lot of time. So like I was saying, see, I've written the, the word love. love. So what I'm going to do is just go back and kind of thick in the downstroke. So if I was writing, this would be downstroke, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll just come back and just double the line over there. So it's like embellishing. Exactly. Is that the correct word to use? Um, or enhancing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Enhancing. You know. So I just double the the downstrokes that I would usually do. Hmm. This would be a downstroke. And what we're what you're drawing, I'm not drawing, or what you're writing on is um, a coaster. It's a coaster. So this will make a really good um, event, like or, or favor for your guests. So you could personalize, Ooh. write your name, write your date, your initials, anything really that you want to write on it. So that's very true. That's that. Do you want to try? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's the red. With the fancy nibs. <laughs> and... Yeah. So am I also doing slanted? However you want to do it, get creative. <laughs> so I'm going to do love as well. Okay. I'm going to just keep it simple. So keep the space in mind. Yes. If you want to use all the space or you want to draw some flowers or something with the excess space that you have. So, so with this, let me take the silver one and then let me see if I can write something. love it's my version of love yep <laughs> you realize that I did a little heart here and a little heart yes. here just to finish it off so there's so many ways you could work with it it's yeah. the possibilities are endless what's that it's a flower oh it's a flower <laughs> I wasn't sure I thought it was a little nose and a, like a cat 
mothers. <laughs> so let's, <Cute>. talk, <laughs> let, let, let's talk about you some more. So clearly calligraphy is something that I would need to really um, study. No, but this is a fantastic art form, honestly. Thank um, you. A lot of patience and the fact that you've made it work hand in hand with mm -hmm. your other profession. Because you said originally this was just a hobby. Yeah. Um, but obviously you were talented enough for people to yeah. request your works. Mm -hmm. um, but what about the challenges though? Um, my main challenge, like we mentioned earlier, is um, people usually calling last minute to get things done. We like done. that thing here. Yes, in yes, because I can get requests like I want. And you know, they're usually weddings in Ghana are usually big as well. So someone comes with 400 invitations a week to the wedding and they want me to address each one. It's very difficult what do you to tell do. Them? Um, usually I'm unable to do it within a, a short time because it's not my fault. I'm not doing this full time. I have right. other, <laughs> other obligations as well. So um, if I usually need for, I, for envelopes, because those ones are, envelopes are usually more delicate mm -hmm. and um, they take longer than even if I was doing this, um, the glass and other surfaces. But um, for envelopes, for example, I need to work on maybe 100 envelopes, I would need about two weeks. Okay. So and I, at a minimum of four weeks for 400 envelopes to be able to do it, space it out and for them to dry nicely would be ideal. Okay. Do you get what I mean? But then, yeah, that's like my major, major problem with um, writing. <laughs> what about client demands? Other than the time factor, some mm -hmm. people are coming in way mm -hmm. too close mm -hmm. to time. What mm -hmm. about, what has been your most interesting request so far? Um, so far, I have been asked to write on, um, on a, a giant mirror mm -hmm. in a home. So I wrote like, um, a quote from f that meant something to the family I had to write it on, on on their home mirror at home which was really nice and then someone wanted me to also write um uh, a citation oh. a citation for them in a mirror form which was also really nice wow. yeah this is like big big requests yeah yeah wow. has anyone asked you to do just got married on the wind windshield of a car not yet. not yet not yet i'm looking forward to that that's Soon an idea coming. maybe they, see that's the thing a lot of people don't know that this services available as well you know so maybe from this platform i'll get some more interesting your, <laughs> requests your cars <laughs> your, your limos your rolls royces just married just married <laughs> this is your lady she'll do it all for you please don't go and get your cousin to come and swim <laughs> all over your car okay so those services are available mm -hmm. so where do you plan to take this in the in the coming years i mean you're doing so much already but yeah. is there anything else you want to add um, not at the moment, yeah. not at the moment, side by side with what I'm doing full time. I think this, this for now, um, would do, but then I definitely, um, I'm open to more opportunities that will come up. I look forward to projects that I haven't even thought about. So people calling me to do things that's definitely outside the box. I'm like all for it. Definitely. What were you, what did your family say when they found out your first new hobby before it mm -hmm. became into an mm -hmm. added profession what would they um it was no surprise oh, okay. <laughs> because um i'm one of those like my hands don't stay still they always need to be doing something yeah. so this was not not it was nothing new to them it was like oh here we go again <laughs> Another one. yes definitely and then just lastly how important is it for us to really promote what we do here in ghana especially in the arts industry um I think it's really important. One of the things that I feel like Ghana is is kind of behind is promoting the art industry from the lower levels in school. Mm. So from primary school, from nursery, you know, I feel like if we're able to encourage kids who are artistic from that time, from that age, I feel like we would go we'll go really really far because I feel like art art is soothing art is um, calming art is it's 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 a good way that people can express themselves and people should be allowed to express themselves you know and this is through art I mean you can't do that through science or, or anything believe it or not I'm a science student oh wow yes yes wow. I know that's <laughs> so what, I was that makes saying. sense that's why you can grasp that this needs to be connected to the, I don't know, it seems like geometry to me. No, so so although I'm, an, I'm a science student and everything, it's in a box, mm -hmm. do you get it? But then when you're doing arts, there's so much you can do. 
you know you can learn a certain one type of art form and personalize it and make it yours yeah. and making owning something like that I think it gives a lot of power to yourself and gives a lot of confidence to anyone who is doing or expressing themselves in that way in Absolutely. the art artistic way <laughs> thank you thank you Fan no but fantastic advice and um, we've learned about your challenges yeah. um, which I think is very important I think we have to be very realistic especially in such an artistic space mm -hmm. um, not mm -hmm. everything is um, roses yeah. and petals but yeah. like you said you know it's worth it mm -hmm. in the end mm -hmm. so we want to thank you so much thank you so much thank for you. coming oh thank you <laughs> thanks for having me oh no it was I've wonderful enjoyed your company thank you and likewise <laughs>